ladies and gentlemen, it is Thursday, August 11th, 2022. Uh, I'm here with Mike Connard. He's the CEO of Visa Silver, which of course will be very familiar to my subscribers. <clears throat> We've been following it uh, since it was about 50 cents and we're pretty happy that we are. Uh, Mike uh, released another set of drill holes from what's called the Kapala Discovery at their Panuco project yesterday. Uh, there's another fantastic set of drill holes. Kapala is clearly turning into something like really, really special. It, it, it is a bit different from some of the other veins at, at Panuco, but, you know, all in a good way. Uh, I'll let Mike go through the details. Visa trades in Canada and the U.S. under the symbol of VZLA. Uh, <laughs> I think this is one of the best silver stores out there. And Kapala is just you know, mag magnified the potential and the and the leverage that I think Visa's got. If, if silver ever stops doing us wrong, <laughs> we're all we're all hoping it will one of these days. Uh, so, do you want to give us? Why don't we just start with a brief overview for those that don't know the company that well, and then we'll jump into Kapala itself. Yeah, sounds good, Eric, and it's good to uh, good to be back with you here. And um, yeah, we're we're very excited with. Uh, the progress that we made at Copala, it's, it's continued to uh, surprise us, exceed our expectations. But, um, you know, originally, uh, Wiesler made its first discovery at the Napoleon vein. Um, you know, that was about two years ago now. And uh, since then, we've, we've been uh, very actively drilling, exploring, systematically exploring this district that we have that we've consolidated for the first time in in modern history, um, you know, in, in March of this year, we put out a resource that, that predominantly focused on the west of the district here, where I've I've highlighted just a, a little bit of reference. We're about 45 minutes an hour away from uh, from Mazatlan in Sinaloa, Mexico. You 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 land at the airport there if you're going to head to the project. Uh, you could go left towards the beach in Mazatlan, or you could take a, a right hand turn up the highway and drive uh, on one of two uh, nice highways to to our project. You eventually on the old highway drive over the Napoleon vein where we made our original discovery. And then from Napoleon, we moved over to the to the east slightly to the Tijitos area and we're drilling Tijitos. But um, more recently, towards the end of last year, we we made the discovery of um, of Copala on the northern end of Tijitos. Now, Copala has uh, basically moved from a new discovery to now our lead vein. Um, you know, if you were to drop a a pin in the middle of uh, kind of Napoleon, Tijitos, and Copala, draw a 500 meter radius, you, you'd have basically the, the majority of our, I mean, the vast majority of, of our resources. And uh, we're aiming for an update towards the end of the year. And I think it's gonna be substantial. Um, I think that, um, you know, we, we certainly were um, uh, surprised the market uh, in terms of upside in the last resource. I'm, I'm, I'm excited and looking forward to, uh, to what we put out um, coming up here towards the end of the year. But maybe I'll, now can you see the press release now? Yep. Switch to that, yep. okay. So uh, maybe I'll just um, talk a little bit about the Copala structure and, and give a little bit of reference here to, so um, earlier this week, we announced 12 and a half meters at uh, over a kilo of silver equivalent. When Wiesla talks about silver equivalent, um, mostly we're talking about silver and gold. It's uh, about just over 50% silver the balance, uh, gold. In some of our veins, we have, you know, low um, base metal credits, but really silver equivalent refers to silver and gold here at, at, at Panuco. Um, our whole 191, which was a southern extent of, uh, of the Copala vein, which is now stretching over 900 meters in strike, and it dips uh, about 400 meters to the east. Um, our, our whole 191 returned one kilo or 1,011 grams uh, silver equivalent over 12.52 meters true width. Uh, in that we had some spectacular grade like 5.6 kilos um, over 1.26 meter. And uh, I, I'm particularly impressed by this one because it's not every day you see in a silver primary district, you see an intercept that has an ounce gold as well as a credit here. So, you know, we love to see that, but further down the hole 191, we had, um, 5.491 gram silver equivalent over 3.28 meters true width. And then that sub interval over 12 kilos um, equivalent. So just fantastic numbers. That wasn't um, it at all. You know, we, we have number of, a number of other holes that we're 
in the kilo range and sub intervals in the multi kilo areas. But um, just to give a reference here, we, we, you know, if we looked at that map uh, earlier, the, the um, reference point of the district, all in the western part of the part of the district here, uh, Napoleon, and then the uh, Tejitos Copala corridor. Uh, basically, the the Copala vein uh, was discovered as we were drilling into the Tejitos vein. Um, we were expecting to drill into the target um, at Tejitos on a uh, sub vertical orientation, and before far before we expected, we we uh, in the hanging wall of Tejitos, we we drilled through uh, the Copala structure, which is a low angle structure, and we intersected. Uh, a true width about 80 meters of, um, of mineralization that graded just under 200 gram silver equivalent with some some high grade flares in there. But um, since then, that you know the Copala vein has grown uh, and astounded us truly. It's, it's grown from uh, essentially 100 meters by 100 meters in, in, in mineralization up here in the purple to now over 900 meters in strike north south and then 400 meters uh, down dip there. I suspect that the uh, uh, the Copala structure will continue a long strike, and, and it certainly appears to continue um, a little bit more in a different orientation, more of a, a sub-vertical orientation um, down to the east, and, and I'll show a, a section here to... Uh, Actually, just before you... Okay, this map's fine. This map shows it better because I just... I was going to point out to people just so there was no confusion because of the similar colors on the last map that the, 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 the indicated and inferred resource from this spring is predominantly tejitos there's a little bit you can see sort of in the sort of the middle the middle right middle left of the uh Kapala area some of that was resource but a lot of this new stuff especially the stuff that's going down in the south that's none of that's in the resource yet right that's all new stuff yeah that's right and so you can kind of you know we, we tried to make it um you know, as clear as possible and, and highlight the, the grade here but you can see the the, the March resource is the, the gray shading on Tejitos. Right. And then you can see a bit of a, uh, a donut here where you have the, um, uh, you know, the existing eight, it was actually eight holes in that March resource that, that included about 24 million ounces of silver equivalent combined indicated and inferred. Um, right. And that, you know, what, what it made up about 25%, a quarter of that, <laughs> that resource. We drilled right. those holes towards the end of the year and, um, and and eight of them on a very conservative search ellipse uh, made it into that resource. Now, you know, we've totally expanded that. We've, you know, in all directions really. And um, we're, we're, we're encouraged by um, some of this other Southern drilling here outside, outboard of that resource area, like uh, that the headline number 191 over here, um, you know, that 12 meters of a kilo. And then, you know, further down here to the South, um, you know, 81, so three and a half meters of, uh, of a kilo as well. Some great grades, um, you know, 159, 10 meters of uh, 418. Uh, you know, the high grade gets, appears to continue over um, to the uh, to the east as well. Okay. I, yeah. I, I should say too, what, you know, what, what really um, encourages us and uh, really surprises us, excites us about Copala is that, uh, and I've asked our team, uh, you know, our, our team, our, our VPX, PhD in, in epithermal systems in Mexico has is, is, is visited many, many of these, I mean, pretty much all of the major um, epithermal uh, districts in Mexico. I asked him today, actually, you know, does this remind, is there an analog that, that, that reminds you of, uh, of this Copala vein? And, you know, it's something that goes from 10 meters to 80 meters in, in thickness and has this, this flat line orientation. And he said, nothing really that, um, you know, that's a new discovery. Of course, this is what all the old timers, you know, hundreds of years ago loved because, you know, near surface, flat line, easy to mine, high grade. But, you know, this appears to be a bit of a relic from 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 days gone by. And, and I think probably accurately, um, indicates the, uh, the prospectivity and the, the, the upside here that we've, we've been able to enjoy because we've consolidated this district and are able to explore it. And you, your, your geological team, they, they think the this Christiano pole that you kind of see running sort of south, southeast, north, northwest on the, on the west side of, of much of this, that somehow that's involved, but you're just not quite sure how it's involved yet. Yeah. You know, it, it is, it really is still pretty early for our, 
our interpretations and our understanding of, of, of what the, you know, the cause of this, this fluid and the mineralization was here, but the Cristiano fault is, is uh, mineralized, um, you know, probably has something to do with, uh, with, with what we're, what we've experienced here at Copala. We just don't really know the answers yet, but, you know, we're, we're too busy with, uh, <laughs> we've got three drill rigs on it. We're, we're working on the interpretations as we speak, but we've got a lot of data coming. Now, are you going to stay with three rigs or do you think you might ramp that up? I mean, it kind of feels like this is definitely the focus right now. It is definitely a focus. I mean, I should say that, you know, nine rigs across the district, but but three at, at Copala. Um, we've also got three over at, um, uh, you know, working on Napoleon and Napoleon continues to grow as well. And, you know, before we... Um, before we really hit it off here at, at Copala, Napoleon, and, and you know, for good reason, was was a was a major focus for us. You know, that's a three kilometer long structure with three and a half meter wide average average vein width. You know, it certainly is is important to drill that. And and um, but you know, again, we're able to with, with with three rigs here, we're able to add a lot of value because for a couple of reasons. One, you know, it's flat line orientation. Uh, and it's relatively near surface, certainly towards uh, the northern end. Uh, as we get further to the east, it, it, it dips down a little bit more, more below surface. But, um, you know, it's it's pretty good drilling here uh, because of those two features. Right. <clears throat> now, it, aside from the obvious being more flat lying and being really thick in places, does, does this zone look really, does it look any different? um to the geos and i mean where i'm going with that is you know stuff like metallurgy i mean does does it seem like this is a different beast or is it, it's just for whatever reason different geometry but the same style of mineralization and everything you, you know there's there's a few of um similarities i would say and, and tijitos and copala you know they're close they're nearby each other they you know they probably intersect at some point as well but they've uh they're um they're they're more similar, I would say, than than Napoleon. Uh, we're still waiting met results from Tijitos there. So, uh, and but the early indications are that it's it's high recovery and very positive. You know, uh, and which is not a huge surprise because this is a, a long term historic camp that's been producing for many years. But um, Napoleon has a slight different uh, metallurgy, I would imagine. I mean, it's also got higher base metals there. Um, where we right. don't see, we have a bit of an absence of base metal so far at Copala. I think we might see that um, kick up a little bit more at depth, but um, where right. where we are drilling so far, it's it's been uh, precious metals rich. Um, but I would say that Tijitos is probably more closely related to, or Copala is more closely related to um, uh, Tijitos. And so we're, we're waiting the, the metallurgy there. Of course, we'll do uh, MET studies on, uh, MET testing, MET studies on, uh, on Copala as well um but this is all you know on the grand scheme of things relatively fresh still okay so what where where in your opinion is this still open i mean we're looking at this plan map which directions do you think you can go in from the outline that you've got here to to sort of keep growing this thing yeah nor i think the really you know the the area that does limit it although we do have some high high grade here west of the Cristiano Fault, but the Cristiano Fault seems to uh, fence it, I, I would say on the west side. So I would right. say to the south and the southeast here, uh, open, um, and then to the north as well, open. Um, you know, we, we, I don't want to, I probably shouldn't get too too far into this, it's early, but we feel like there's other structures in and around probably further to the west as well that that may have some relation to to Copala, or or you know we're able to, or, or maybe similar to Copala, but maybe separate structures. So, uh, my my general feeling after talking to the team uh, pretty extensively about this area uh, is that you know the Tijitos Copala they're not one offs. Uh, I think there's going to be other structures. I mean, we already know that you know there's. I'll just go down to this this long section here too. But you know we also we have the Copala two vein that we've. Um, we've intersected that's been very promising i think that should have some some meaningful high grades there as well um but uh you know it's clear it's clear that it's open probably going to to the source i would imagine to uh to the east here as well so we'll, we'll continue to drill that okay so you got three rigs going this is just you're going to be drilling indefinitely i guess as long as it's open yeah. and you probably get it looks like you probably get some holes to fill in as well um in it 
<clears throat> so what what's the current I mean, I know you had it in the release, but just for the purpose of the video, what's the current sort of dimensions that you're working off of now? Yeah, so strike is about 900, so it's 900 okay. meters. And, um, you know, down dip is uh, 400 meters. And then, okay. you know, we, you know, we don't have this, this is not a, you know, bona fide number yet, but it appears that we're probably around that 10 meter average thickness. Okay, that's, yeah, that's, that's a lot of tonnage, I mean. It's a, yeah. This is a very impressive, it's a very, very impressive discovery. It's nice to see you got three rigs on it. I mean, is there anything? So you got you got three at Capella, three at I, I assume three at Napoleon, and three still kind of jumping around from place to place. Without yeah, maybe I'll, letting, I'll, I'll, without I'll, letting too many cats out of the bag. Is there is there anything else that looks like it may become a, a thing down the road? <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, I, I, we, I can't let too many of the secrets yeah. out because no, there's, no, I, I, there's, I, a, I there's a few thing like creatures, I suppose, in the, okay. in, in the camp, <laughs> but um, I'll tell you, there's a couple of things that I, that I'm quite ex excited about, but I'll just let you know where the other um, drills are. So one at La okay. Luisa here, one at, at Cruz Negra, and we've actually filled in these, these uh, concessions as well. So this, this is a bit of an older map where we are constantly adding concessions in the area. Um mm -hmm. And then we've also been had a lot of success drilling here at Los Generales in the central central block. Um, okay. But there's a couple of things that 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 I get excited about, um, particularly in the western area here. Um, <clears throat> La Luisa drilling appears to be going fairly well so far. Um, this is a this is interesting because Jesus and and the team uh, have discussed this and come up with a, a bit of a model for um the western portion here where apparently uh you know some of these veins have been covered by younger volcanics um so they haven't they haven't been you know eroded or or um uh, you know they're still intact ideally under those younger volcanics so we're we're testing targets um to find these pre preserved veins or shoots um in the west under this cover um and la luisa has had some some early indications of success we we just there's more work to be done. Uh, how, how, are tar how are they targeting that? So it's interesting because there actually are some very small, you know, not not well established uh, old workings, and and you know the surface grade is is, is pretty low um, because it's so high in the system. As, as, you know, according to our right as, as as the way that we see it, you know, of course this is early models, but there are some old. Um, uh, old workings there and, and then the structures apparently have been mapped or inferred in the past as well um but you know we've got a ton of ground out here to the west that um that you know that that's covered by these younger volcanics as well so um that's been a that's been quite interesting uh from my perspective look the cruz negra looks good as well and then uh to the east in between say the western area and uh the central block this area has never really been mapped We've got guys out there working on that right now. Um, you know, if we put more efforts into that, that you know, the classic uh, prospecting, mapping, trying to find targets in this this gap area here. But this Aguazarca, Cerrillo, these are structures that are around uh, Copala. Uh, Aguazarca is to the uh, basically to the I would say the northwest of uh, of, of uh, Copala, and it has indications of being a flat line structure as well. Uh, it has some, some historic mining on it that uh, we get a bit of a feel for the, the orientation. It's a, it's, you know, it's early, it's still a question mark. We don't fully understand what's going on there, but uh, we're working on it. Um, I, I think that has some promise. And then Cerrillo appears quite promising as well. That's kind of Northeast of, of uh, Copala. Uh, but I think if I'm correct, it's about a kilometer runway from kind of where we are on on uh, Copala uh, where we're drilling on Copala so you know I, you can kind of see it here uh, if you go if you look we, we we used to have a map of um you know these these vein fields famous vein fields in Mexico and you know Fresnillo San Dimas and uh you know you look at that and it was a great map to have a few years ago when we started because it you know this was like you know a few red lines on the map uh, most of them running northwest in orientation, and then you look at San Dimas, and it's just a swarm of these 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 red lines, these veins that have been mined or discovered, and and but you can see now over 
over time, our, our Western area, if you were to take these blocks off, you would see all these little veins that we've, we've discovered. And, and you see the major structures that are running, these cross-cutting structures that run through them. And, you know, this is just over a couple of years of, of steady exploration. I, I think in due time, you know, this, this district will be, you know, a, a swarm of these, these red veins that we, we find on. And, um, you know, I, this is just the very beginning. It's, it's, it's pretty darn exciting. I, I think that resource update is, is going to be pretty sizable in, in towards the end of the year. And um, okay. I feel like we've got lots more to find in, certainly in the West. Yeah, no, this, I mean, the story just keeps improving. I mean, I mean, really, I think the only the only break you guys need, and I think you might even need this less going forward, obviously, is the silver price. Um, I keep reminding readers that one of, the, one of the things I really like about Panuco is, yes, it's a silver district, but a lot of these veins um, and, and uh, you know, the newer discoveries are, are really, you know, typical of that, the whole sort of Tejitos area, if you will, including Kapala. Uh, you get really, you get very high, silver and high gold grades low base metals pretty clean looking stuff i mean it, it looks like you know to me it looks like very high margin material um you know from the comments you're making i mean you obviously can't you're not allowed to make a guesstimate but it, it sounds to me like this thing's going to be coming in around 200 million ounces silver equivalent uh there aren't that many of those around there there sure as hell aren't many of them around they have the kind of average grade that that uh you guys do so i i think uh i think visa and anybody that's interested in precious metals generally silver especially i think anybody's anybody who is has got to have silver you know panuco and visa has to be on your radar and and should probably be in your account like it's in mine it's just <laughs> you know this this capella stuff just it's the combination of size and grade this the the leverage to the metal prices just keeps increasing here so you know i think once once silver has a decent rally i would expect visa to to move quite strongly and i'm i'm happy to be positioned for that uh you guys have done a great job mike i mean it just it just this is just seems to be one of those stories where it's good news after good news after good news and aren't that many of us around either as we're all well aware uh expiration is hard uh so three rigs going, I guess. So we're gonna we're just gonna keep seeing pretty regular updates from Kapala. But you know, I guess at some point some of these outside exploration targets and stuff will start seeing more from those as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you know, you're right, the exploration is is hard work, but we're you know, we're fortunate we have a, a really, really great team in, in Mexico and Canada that's that's making it probably look easier than it is. But uh, you know, they've the, the team's done an excellent job. And yeah, I would say that. You know, as we continue to um, to go here, it's probably going to be, you know, maybe every four weeks or so, um, Copala, four weeks, maybe six for, you know, Copala news. But in between that, we'll have, you know, your Napoleon news. Um, right. At some point, we should have a La Luisa and Cruz Negra update, probably a corporate update where we, we, you know, we don't highlight this very often. But, you know, I, I just talked about our team, but our, our community team is, is I would say, second to none as well in, in, in uh in the country and you know they've done some incredible work with the ajitos you know we've got long-term 30-year agreements with uh with all the relevant ajitos in um you know that cover this map here so we'll probably have a an update on that as well it's you know those aren't the things necessarily that um put the stock up 20 percent, but uh they're um you know they're important milestones and important things that we like to highlight so you know i, right. I think yeah, it's it's our, our philosophy here has been that we want to you know, a lot of companies and we could have could have really throttled back here and gone to, you know, just three rigs on Copala, say, or something like that. But yeah. uh, I have a feeling that the, the, you know, the market's going to improve sooner than we might think. And and our philosophy has been that we we you know, we want to maintain this momentum. And, you know, we've gone through the effort of being nicely listed now to to remove any, um, uh, you know, barriers for entry for for American shareholders. Um yeah. You know, Visa Silver. I, I think it's going to become, you know, a, an important name, maybe the name, when we come out of this uh, the slump in the precious metals. And I don't know any other company out there that's that's really adding ounces with every release that they put out, like we are here. So I think we're going to have great momentum. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it's a it's a great story all around. Uh, if you're not following Visa, you definitely should be. Uh, you 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 need to understand. Kapala's Kapala really, you know, I hate the phrase game changer, but Kapala really is a game changer. 
Um, their resource is going to grow a lot faster than I would have expected. And I was probably, be, I thought I was being optimistic before, but as importantly, it's growing with something that's got the grade and the geometry that in a mining scenario, this would be very high margin stuff. Um, and that's, you know, that's the name of the game. That's, that's what gets you through to a mining decision. Um, and not coincidentally, it's also normally what gets you taken out. Uh, the high margin players, the ones that go first normally. So, I mean, great name, great story, great team. Visa Silver, VZLA in, in Canada and also Visa, the VZLA on the uh, NYSE Amex. Uh, take a look at it, get, get on top of this story because I just think there's going to be more and more good news coming. Thanks for dropping by, Mike, and uh, obviously hope for a lot more success going forward. Well, thanks, Eric. I really appreciate that, and it's great to see you again.